We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. So now we're going to head over to North Carolina to check out the finals match one from the Southern Guilford High School Qualifier. Uh, as many of you already probably know, this match is the highest scoring match this year at 520, I believe it's 522. Um, so let's start off and check out this match. So uh, all four robots, as we can see, have uh, started lashed onto the lander. They're going to drop down. This was just a pretty standard awesome autonomous period as uh, like Shishi and I were talking, we really need to have a consistent autonomous. What we're going to see here is uh, four of the robots are going to be deployed. Um, looks like there are about four team markers dropped. It's hard to tell for the Blue Alliance because that one robot there uh, sits in that um, depot. Uh, and then there are three samples and three parks. So the Red Alliance had a perfect 160-point autonomous, uh, and the Blue Alliance um, looks like they, I think they missed one sample and um, one park. Yes, yeah, so these so the teams that are playing is uh, on the blue lines, we have 7105 Swift Intergalactic Space Llamas uh, partnered with uh, uh, partnered with 5064 Aperture Science. Uh, that's the Red Alliance. Then on the blue lines, we have 9977 uh, Circuit Shifters. And I could not ever read the uh, number that the Circuit Shifters were partnered with and it wasn't in the video's YouTube description. So I don't have that information for you. All right, so um, just a quick thing that I, I do want to, uh, I just want to interject about these teams. So Swift, um, the, the whatever their name was, so Space... Intergalactic I, I, Space Llamas. It was Lamas. pretty cool. Yeah, the Intergalactic Space Llamas. They were the finalist alliance captain, I believe, of the Houston World Championship last year. Um, and actually one of the coolest things was that this alliance, we saw, we actually saw a match video from this alliance last year, right? Um, this was one of the most popular videos of, of the Relic Recovery season with, um, what's it called? With uh, 50, uh, I forget. Uh, their, 50, uh, oh. 64. Yeah, with Aperture. Yeah, with Aperture. Uh, basically Aperture doing both ciphers. If uh, if veterans remember that, um, it was pretty, It's uh, that was a really, really cool, uh, cool match to see. And it's really nice to see that alliance uh, reunite again and uh, be able to score so highly um, and work so well together, even as the seasons progress. Yeah, I did not remember that. But uh, yeah, no, I definitely have heard of Swift before and they're doing just as well this season, it seems, as they were doing last season. It'll be interesting to see what happens at the North Carolina State Championship. Uh, if they can already get 522 in a qualifier, I can only imagine the uh, changes that they're going to make. So I guess let's jump right into the uh, driver control period in this match. So we're going to see Swift right there on the Red Alliance. Just five seconds into the match, they score their first two minerals. Uh, like many robots this year, they have. it looks like they have a sorting box on the robot, so it doesn't matter if they pick up silver or gold minerals. Uh, their robot, uh, their mechanism just sorts that for them. So uh, let's pause this match right here. Um, let's actually go back to about uh, a minute 45. Um, yeah, so right there, it's a little bit hard to tell, uh, but if we look at that back left crater, we're going to see 9977 circuit shifters in the blue lines and 5064 aperture science on the red alliance, uh, both right there in that crater. This is one of that stra those strategies I was talking about earlier, uh, go to your opposite uh, go to the opposite alliance's crater if you're on the uh, odd side, so to say, of the lander. Um, what I want to point out there is both of those robots have a spinning rubber band collectors, which uh, I think have been pretty common this year. I've seen it quite a lot of them. Uh, just something interesting to point out. Uh, very, very similar designs there. Um, so let's continue on. Um, so as we continue watching, um, I'd say it's nice to see that both the Red Alliance robots are actively scoring minerals, and it's not just one of those teams scoring in the lander. Um, as we've seen in a couple of the other matches we've watched, it's pretty. It's usually pretty heavy on one uh, power team, but here uh, the load of scoring seems to be pretty even, though uh, it falls a little heavier on uh, Swift. Um, yeah, I mean, there's not a whole lot more that ha occurs in this match other than Swift and uh, Aperture Science just kind of going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, um, filling up that lander. It's just kind of mesmerizing to watch. Um, similar to gluten-free and crack and pinion, Swift doesn't move a whole lot, though. They don't, it looks like they have uh, 
they only have one uh, mechanism for scoring. So uh, their scoring mechanism is uh, separated from their collector. So that arm is just going up and down, up and down. Uh, yeah, so that's, I actually wanted to just jump in for that part a little bit. So like we saw the, um, we saw sort of like I, what I feel is going to be the meta, the highest level meta with teams crack and pinion and gluten free. But this this arm mechanism is working quite well for these teams, right? Again, as you mentioned, Swift is sort of going for that principle of try to move that robot as less as possible, but try to move your extrusions more um, more to compensate um, because extrusions are faster to move than the um, than the robot itself. But I think that Swift has actually found a very very crucial balance between the two. So if teams are looking to do that redesign or whatnot, right? Swift, the capability of Swift to be able to move their arm back while simultaneously driving back and maintaining like their own stability, like they're not tipping or anything, having that capability, right? That's also what's allowing them to reduce their cycle times and be as efficient as possible when they go into that crater and when they go into scoring those minerals. But at the same time, I'm pretty happy with how Aperture is doing as well, right? Like, again, they're not really dumping from the blue alliances like side. They're going around to the red alliance side to prevent those penalties, which is more conservative, and that's fine. I like it. Um, but they're doing that quite effectively. I really, uh, I like the efficiency that they're doing with that. They're not like driving elsewhere and they're not like trying to struggle to get into position. They know how to get from point A to point B the same way every single cycle. And I think that's what's key. If you're playing the far crater, if you're playing that, playing that secondary position, that's what's going to get you to um, be as efficient as possible. And that's what's going to get you to really be a good addition to any alliance. Totally, yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, I'm just watching it right now. We see, uh, yeah, Aperture Science just going essentially, as you were talking about, the same path every single time, same with Swift. And it just turned out really well that they had the perfect match. I mean, but they wouldn't have been able to do that, going back to what I was saying earlier, because I like to harp on this, without a perfect autonomous, perfect endgame, which is what matters. And, um, yeah, so uh, Shishir, I have, do have one question for you. Um, do you think a team like Gluten Free... Uh, can be more efficient. I mean, would they, I guess, would they be able to make uh, either one of their linear extensions longer so that they don't even have to move the entire match? I think, uh, I personally think that's the only way they can go. Of course, I'd love it if Peter and Steven surprise me and become like even better than they are, because <laughs> that would be awesome. Of course it would. Um, but I really, I personally just don't see a way for them to improve. Like I'm always looking and I'm always thinking about ways to get my robot as more efficient. And I'm, I'm looking for outside, I'm looking for inspiration, but looking at them, I really think they've capped out what they can do because of how simultaneous their actions are. I think that if they do a little bit more automation, right. In the terms of like how they extend both extrusions and make sure that when they come together, it's like as quick and as efficient as possible so that like they're not using driver control to do that. Like they're actually actually automating bits and pieces of this. I think that that's what's going to make them more effective. Um, and of course, like if anyone can do it, it's gluten-free. They have the best like stuff in the world. And that was a pretty, pretty sick dab over there. On yeah. The, can we on talk the about that for a second? Holy this kid, this kid is way more interesting than what just happened. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's beautiful. Wow. Um, <laughs> Uh, all right, yeah, I'm I'm down. Oh, he's, he's, he keeps going. All right, he's not done. Uh, okay, so yeah, let me uh, let me grab that question. Uh, let me just grab a question from chat. Um, I don't have the chat up. Yeah. So um, I personally don't think. Uh, so here, uh, like, I, I have different tiers. Like, the question was, do you think that these arm bots will be as effective as double lifts at any time of the season? So for me, I personally have sort of, a, 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 like, a ranking of teams and robots that I can sort of see um, working successfully, right? Um, the top tier, my very, very top tier, are those um, are the double arm bots, right? Like, I have, there's no question in my mind that the double arm bots are what are going to be the winners of the world championship, and those guys are the ones who are going to go the first this um uh because that's just the, the efficiency there is 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 key um and you're not having an, a robot you're not having that much uh, robot circular motion because as we know like sir, like rotational motion on ro on robots is less predictable uh, as as just linear motion and as such it's going to become a little more hard to manage and work well with those um with those mechanisms so i feel like those guys are the top tier the the double arm bots um and below them 
are these are the um, the double arm bots that go straight up. So sorry, let me just uh, take a step back. I think that the most effective double arm bots are the ones that have the angled arm, right? So that they basically stand in one place and they're able to do everything without their drivetrain moving as much. Because as I mentioned, I feel like the less your drivetrain moves, the more efficient you are. But um, second, I think that the second tier, um, the next tier, are teams like Recharge Green, where they have double arms, but their second arm goes straight up and down. Um, do like Recharge Green and I think Nuts and Bolts 50-40. Um, those two teams are teams that have shown that success in the uh, in the way that their arm moves. And actually, wait, Aperture, I think, does the exact same thing. <laughs> um, so um, I think that those guys are also efficient, but just because their robot has to move back and forth, they are also, um, they're going to be a little less efficient. But very similar to those guys, I'd also put these arm bots. I'd put the circular arm bots because I think that these two things are very, very compa comparable, right? Having that straight linear motion or having an arm that moves simultaneously with your drivetrain. And in terms of speed, I think those are very comparable. So I think that they're a slight tier below, but they're still very, very competitive for this year's game. Yeah, um, so I can't totally see the next question because I... I don't so have it up. There's a question from uh, Nate List asked one other question. Said, uh, "Do you think it's possible for two angled extension bots like Luden Free? Uh, we will be able to work together effectively at Worlds, or will they just block each other on the field?" So that is a good question. And I actually, my team had to think about that during alliance selection recently. Um, it depends, I would say. If your if your team is using uh, one of those very popular um, uh, sorting boxes where you have to be on that crater side because the block slides straight forward, the ball takes the curve, and, or the silver mineral, sorry, takes the curve and uh, goes to the left, you probably won't, you can't pair up two of those robots because they literally just don't work together based off the, the design. So um, I think it's really gonna depend on the design of um, how they uh, send minerals into the lander. Um, what, one of the things my team has been talking about, if we uh, qualify past state because we are one of those sorting bots is um, actually making two of those boxes and then getting inspected twice in both the configurations and depending on who we're with, if it's a competitive match, uh, switching out which box we're gonna use, one for um, depot side, one for crater side of the lander. So if you're like that, you're gonna need some, uh, you're gonna need to be able to adapt your robot. But if you're uh, like Swift here, uh, where you're just going back and forth, picking up and going, you could definitely be partnered with someone like Gluten Free or Crack and Pinion or any of the, those super competitive teams. Uh, you might, you just might not be as quick uh, as you want, uh, were before because you're not right next to that crater, but you can still be pretty quick as we're seeing with Aperture Science uh, in that back right corner. Absolutely. And uh, to add on to that a bit, I think that the the only way to be very successful with the angled slides, in addition to what Nathan, what you were saying about you have to have those two dumpers and whatnot, you also have to be able to score from the um, you have to be score. You have to be able to score directly from your oppo uh, opponent's crater side, because if you have to go around to the side like Aperture is doing currently, um, there's just no way because you have to be you have to ensure your angle you have to ensure your position away from the lander and there's so many aspects of this that make it less efficient. So um, I think that if you really if you um, if you're one of those uh, angled slides bots, you just have to be the best at the crater because I don't think you're going to be very successful at going to the opposing crater um, or playing the uh, secondary position. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live and independent. Pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now.